Hello everybody, once again. Same shirt, but different topic. Let's talk about brands. Not clothing brands, but the employer brand. So welcome to What the Future Insights. There are these companies where everybody just wants to work. Some because they pay very well, others because they use really cool technologies, and then some more because they really appreciate the culture. So what's the formula, the magic formula behind employer branding? Well, I see it very simple. It's basically how you interact with current and future employees. And the other one, how you actively manage the brand through different media. And these two together, basically, they develop into a management co concept, how you work out your employer brand. And what's really important to keep in mind, since employer brands can be actively managed, it's more towards the perceived image, the reputation, and not so much always about the true identity of a company. So the question I ask myself is why does a company actually need an employer brand? Or even more, why, the, why should any company have an employer brand? As always, I tried to work it out with data and statistics. So one number I found was that 75% of applicants would not even apply at a company where they believe it has a bad reputation. So an employer brand with good transparency, I think really helps to, to communicate the message. And the question is how to do it. There are many, many, many sources how you can do it. There are social media, and then also, of course, there are your employees, your staff that can be, each individual can be an, an influencer about your employer brand. That's very important to keep in mind since they are always online and work and private life. Also, they seem to kind of melt together more and more. A very interesting fact that I found during the research as well was that over 50% of the applicants, they would abandon an application if they find out that a company has a negative review on evaluation portals. Why do I find this interesting? Because personally, I don't believe all these reviews. I believe they can be fake, but this is really up to you to judge. So let's translate this into employer branding. We can say that you don't pick the talent, but the talent rather picks you. Now I would like to share with you what we see is not really recommended in an employer branding campaign. While we see that especially younger employees are very attracted to this extra $100 or this super nice office space, the more senior and more experienced employees, they rather prefer working with very good technologies and a very experienced team and a very well kept and maintained team. So of course, it's nice to cover both of these uh, target groups, but in my opinion, uh, the first one offering this extra money or this extra nice office space is really a race that you cannot win because if you offer this nice office your competitor can do the same and they can do it even better or faster or bigger so to close the session let's go back to one of the initial sentences i said employer branding is about the perceived image of a company while it does not necessarily mean it's also the identity, the culture of a company. Looking back at the facts and the numbers I found in the subsequent statements, I would challenge this statement and would rather ask you the question, shouldn't be the employer brand, the perceived image, be the same as the identity or the culture of a company? I hope that every one of you has come to their own conclusion about this final question. I thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to see you next time. Bye bye.